it, whipping it. She in the kitchen with it. Lexi is whipping it, whipping it. She in the kitchen with it. Lexi is whipping it, whipping it. She in the kitchen with it. Lexi is whipping it, whipping it. She in the kitchen with it. Cooking with Lexi. The way that she whip it, impressive. Talent a blessing. Palette is way too expensive. Hey YouTube, it's me again. I'm back and today we're making Valentine's Day sugar cookies. So the issue that I usually have with sugar cookies is that whatever shape you punch out is not the shape that you get when it comes out of the oven. It's like a melted version of it. This recipe, however, is to die for because it requires a lot of refrigeration time, which also means that you get the shape that you punch out. They're super thick, layery. So good. But where we're gonna start is we're gonna take our unsalted butter at room temperature, which I have cubed, so it gets room temp quicker. We're gonna add it to our mixer with the paddle attachment. So with our room temperature butter in the mixer, we are going to mix for about five minutes, stopping two times to scrape the sides of the bowl. All right, so. sides of the bowl part way through mixing is because we want all of the butter to be whipped the same. We want it to be light and fluffy for when we add the sugar. Right. We're going to scrape down one more time. All right. Now that that's all mixed and fluffy, we're going to add the one cup of white sugar. So same thing with when it was just the butter, we're going to want to scrape down the sides of the bowl a couple times, but all together, the butter sugar is going to mix for about two minutes. Now that the butter and sugar has been creamed together, we're going to scrape the sides of the bowl again. What you're going to do next is you're going to take one egg and you're going to take a tablespoon of vanilla, beat them together, and then add them to your butter sugar mixture. I like to beat the egg on its own and then add it to the vanilla. So now that the egg's been beaten, I am going to add it to the vanilla. And beat the two of them until they're combined. So what we're going to do now is we are going to get this mixer going on a low speed and we're going to slowly pour in the egg and vanilla mixture. Once it's all in there, I like to scrape the sides of the bowl again and then get going just until combined on medium speed, so maybe 30 seconds to a minute. All right, so once that's all evenly combined, we're gonna give it another scrape down. From here, what we're gonna do is we are going to combine the quarter teaspoon of salt the teaspoon of baking powder in with the three cups of flour. And to just give a quick mix to all of the ingredients, make sure they're all evenly spread out. So you have to add the flour mixture gradually to the butter mixture because just the amount of moisture in the wet ingredients isn't enough to absorb the flour quick enough. If you just add it all in at once, it needs a little bit more time to incorporate as it mixes. So what you're going to do once that is all combined is taking off my rings so that I can really get in there and knead the dough into a disc that I will wrap and put in the fridge. So you're going to want to knead it about two or three times just until it comes together and holds in a little disc ball shape. So now that I've got the dough all kneaded and it's stained together, I'm gonna take some saran wrap and lay it out on the table. We're just gonna fold this up in the saran wrap. And we're gonna keep it in the fridge for about four to eight hours. So after the dough has been chilling in the fridge, we're going to take it out and we are going to give it a quick knead before we roll it out because it is going to be pretty rock solid. Before we do anything else, we are just going to divide the dough and you're going to use one half now, one half in a little bit. So rewrap this piece, pop it back in the fridge. 
advantage when you're ready for it. We're gonna knead the dough just so it's soft enough that we can roll it out. All right, so now that I've got it kneaded, I'm going to put the ball of dough in between two pieces of parchment paper. So the beauty of using parchment paper to roll the dough out is that you don't have to flour any of your surfaces, like the counter, the rolling pin, or the dough itself, which is great because then the dough won't drop out from having more flour added to it. So a little tip to get your dough all at a consistent, even thickness, is to use little guiders like these. So what I did the first time I was making these cookies is I was under a bit of a time crunch. I didn't have time to like go out and buy actual little thickness guides. So what I did is I took two sets of wooden chopsticks and I stacked them on top of each other and duct taped them together. And they work perfectly. I've been using them ever since, no complaints. So if you don't want to go out and buy them, just do that. We're gonna put these under the parchment paper on either side of the dough, and we're gonna start rolling. Take the guiders up, lift up the parchment, and voila, you've got your dough ready to cut with whatever shapes you like. Today, my choice of cookie cutters is Valentine's Day theme. So I've got a lot of hearts. I'm gonna start with a big guy. I'm just gonna move this onto parchment paper that I've got on my cookie sheet. So since I keep the dough pretty thick, you do end up with a pretty small piece of dough, but trust me, it is so worth it when you try this thick, delicious cookie, you will never go back. Once you have something like this, you can cut out the small pieces, like with like a little cookie cutter, or you can just re-roll it and cut some more big cookies. So I cannot get any more cookies out of this, so I'm gonna re-roll and Cut out some more. I can get a couple small cookies out of this ball, but once you've reached the end of the first clump of cookie dough's life, you're gonna pull out the second clump and do the exact same thing as you did with the first. Now that my tray is all full, I am going to put these in the fridge for about 15 minutes. You can also do freezer for eight, but I've got the time while my oven is preheating to 375, so I'm gonna pop these in the fridge. Now that my cookies have chilled for 15 minutes, I'm gonna pop them in the oven for about nine minutes, but again, keep your eyes on the cookies because it depends on your oven. My cookies baked for about nine minutes. I removed them from the oven and now I'm gonna let them sit until they harden up and I can move them over to the wire cooling ground. While the cookies cool, I'm gonna start on the icing. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take two eggs. You're gonna separate them and just keep the egg whites. So the way that you do that is you crack the egg open, you split the shell in two, and then there's actually a couple ways to do it, so I'll do both. So you can either crack the whole egg into there, and then with your hand, you scoop out really delicately the yolk. Just like so. It's a lot less technical than the other way, which is like this. Split it in half, and then you delicately put the yolk back and forth between the two half shells until all of the egg white is gone, and it's just yolk in here. And that's it, your two egg whites. So I'm using this whisk attachment right here because it's the best for whipping the egg whites. We're gonna add the egg whites to the mixer, and we are going to beat until they are stiff peaks, but not dry. So you will know it is done when it looks like that, when it comes out. So it kind of holds its shape, so a little jiggly, but that's where you want it. From here, we are going to gradually, because like with the flour mixture earlier for the cookies, we do not want all of the powdered sugar to go in and then just like everywhere. So we're gonna add this gradually on a low speed and then we're going to add in the juice of one lemon. We'll alternate between the sugar and the lemon. Just to keep everything nice and moist in there. If you want it a little thicker, you can add more powdered sugar. If you want it thinner, you can add more egg whites. 
just depends on how thick or thin you want your icing. I have now reached my desired consistency, so I'm gonna start coloring my icing to decorate. So for my icing colors, I've picked pink, blue, green, and purple because I am going to make conversation hearts. So if you don't know what those are, they're little sugar hearts that say like, hi, kiss me, whatever on them that come in the little box that you give people Valentine's Day. I think those are so cute. So I am going to turn my little cookies into those. So let's get dying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop some icing into each of the bowls and keep a little bit here for some white. All right, so to dye it, I just take this food coloring here with a toothpick. Dip the toothpick in here and swipe it into the icing. I'll do them with all the colors and then just mix it up with a spoon. If it's too light, you add a little bit more food coloring. If it's too dark, you add a little bit more white icing. Easy. So now I've gotten to this pink. I love it. I'm going to keep it just like that. What I'm going to do now is I am going to put my little icing tip. I've taken a really small circle and I'm going to cut the end off of my piping bag. I always fold it over like this so it is easier to get the icing tip into the end of the ready bag. Now I'm just going to take a spoon and scoop in my icing into my ready bag. I'm just going to take a little bit out of time and I'm going to do the rest of my colors the same way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our icing and on our now cooled cookies we are going to pipe a little outline just around the outside and then when that's kind of hardened up a bit we're going to flood the inside so it doesn't drip off the corners of the cookie. Like so. So now that the piping around the exterior of the cookie has hardened we can now flood the cookies. But what I'm gonna do is I've chilled my icing a little bit so I can get more of a squiggly detail on the inside because I just think it's kinda cute. Like so. So if you don't want any sort of texture on your icing, you can just kind of hit it on the table lightly, just a couple taps, and give it a couple shakes as well. Another really good tool to use is a toothpick, just to kind of even out all the little bumps. When you're icing, you're going to want to keep a hand up here and twist the bag. And you can squeeze from up here and a little bit from down here. That's just so the icing doesn't all come out the top and so it all stays down at the bottom so you don't run out of icing at the bottom. The difference between the cookies that I've done here is that these guys just have a little bit of a texture to them. And these guys have just been regularly flooded, so have a flat, glossy look. Doesn't make any difference to the cookie other than its looks, so it's really just a personal choice. So now is the hard part. We are going to take our tiny little cookies and we're gonna write little love notes on them. I have taken the smallest tip and I'm using white icing. I'm go for some things like, love you, call me, be mine. So wish me luck. After decorating, I have picked out my favorites, and here they are. We've got Illy, Day, Be Day, Be Mine, Call Me, another Illy, Love, XOXO, Text Me. And then with tiny little letter cutouts, I wrote Love, but I swapped out the O for R. For the bigger cookies, on this one I wrote Love You. 
And on this cookie, I wrote love you and then to the moon and back. So I'll put the full recipe in the description below. And I want to say thank you again so much for watching my video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. My handle will also be in the description below.